What's up guys, Ryan Schultz here from E39 Source, out here at E39 Source headquarters in San Diego, California. Today we've got a DIY on the E39 M5, changing the coolant. This is a job that's recommended by BMW every three years, and almost nobody follows that. It's a pretty inexpensive way to keep things running and functioning as designed. This will be applicable to both the E39 540 and the M5. We're doing a two-part drain today. Um, not only the coolant reservoir or expansion tank and radiator, but the engine block as well. And both the 540 and the M5 are equipped with V8 engines, two cylinder banks, of course. And there are actually drain plugs in the engine block that we're going to be releasing today uh, to get more coolant out of the engine itself. Your 525, 28, and 530 also have a coolant drain plug for the engine, but of course there's just one of those instead of two. So with the car up in the air, however you like to do that, we've got lifts here. I love these ECS tuning little pucks that fit perfectly in the jack pad there uh, for a nice safe lift, or if you're going to do it on jack stands, whatever you do, be safe with that. But our first priority here will just be removing the underbody panels. And for the M5, we've got to remove two. So we have the primary engine belly pan in the front, and then the M5 uses this call it the Patrick Star piece, uh, the transmission shield here in the back. So for that, we'll need a 10 millimeter nut driver or socket and a Phillips head screwdriver. We'll start here on the back of the M5, and these are just quarter turn quick release screws right in between the exhaust at the back of the transmission. We'll find our first of several Phillips head screws. These should stay in place. They've got little clips on the inside uh, that are supposed to keep the screws captive. This is always easier with another set of hands, but it's just me today. So we'll just go around the perimeter, find all the screws. I like to leave one in just so it doesn't hang and put too much stress on it. Um, Patrick Star has to come off first because it's sandwiched uh, just below the primary belly pan. And you won't be able to get the primary pan off without this. So if you have a 540, skip ahead. This isn't applicable to you. So the only two screws I have left, that one's released. It's just this inner one. Once I loosen that up and get this thing a little tug, it'll come right off. And there it is. Up next, we'll focus on the primary belly pan, and these are in varying conditions. I've seen some missing a lot of tabs, but up here by the passenger side motor mount, we've got a screw. It mirrors on the driver's side. And then in the front, or kind of the sides here, the front fastener is supposed to be from factory a 10 millimeter screw, though most of those are missing, but this one is still here, which is fantastic. And then we've got another quarter turn in the rear. And then on this side, same thing, Phillips and hiding in the shadows is a 10. 10 millimeter screws look like that. Again, just two of them, and in all likelihood, yours will be missing. Once they're released, this pan kind of comes down and hinges like this, and now it is definitely a two-hand job to swing this down the rest of the way and very carefully clear your pork chops here, these lower front fender liners. We just don't want to put too much force on that, but you'll be able to force it down and kind of wiggle it out of here. It's got a lip that sits up on top of the bumper, and then we'll set that aside. We're looking towards the front of the car right now with no belly pan, and it's easy to find the radiator drain plug. It's this blue quarter turn plastic plug on the driver's side. And before we remove that, I'm just going to either hop up on that ladder or lower the car a little bit and just remove the cap from the coolant expansion tank. And that will allow the coolant to come out more quickly without glugging. Now we need a way to collect all of the old coolant. So I just use a five gallon Harbor Freight bucket sitting atop a uh, oil catch dolly. And we'll start with the radiator and expansion tank. Reason being, we'll just get less of a mess in the in the back here as we get in there and drain the block out. And this car has a almost completely new suspension, a lot of new control arms and motor mounts and components under here that I don't want to get messy. So uh, we'll try to work as cleanly as possible. But looking at the drain plug in the bottom of the radiator, we're just going to rotate this counterclockwise 90 degrees with some set of pliers. And then there's a little hole in it, which will come in handy as we'll use a pick to gently pry it out of there. Here's the weird setup, block of wood for leverage and a pick, and it becomes a lever as the floodgates open. Let this drain for as long as possible until it all but stops, and a little tip if you really want to get everything out of here, um, you can pretty much clean off the uh, expansion tank lid and uh, carefully go in there and just blow into it, blow some pressure around, you'll hear a bunch of gurgles, and then you'll get another blast of coolant as you further drain the radiator. As we let that drain out, let's get a look at the engine block here and find those uh, coolant drain plugs in the block. So we're looking now towards the rear of the car, and we can kind of come up here by the starter. You'll see that bolt 
with a, a yellow mark on the end of it. Right there, that is a 13 millimeter head. It goes down to 25 Newton meters or 18.5 pounds. And that's going to be our bank number one coolant drain. We'll zoom out and work our way over to bank two. I'm gonna turn around here and kind of face the front right side of the car and look up in there. And now our yellow marker has turned blue. Same head, same torque slightly more challenging to access. Put some plastic bags over everything that I can protect here. And the socket setup, at least for bank one that I'm using, is a very simple 13 millimeter short well 6.38 drive socket on a three inch extension and then a flex ratchet. We didn't need to use any swivels here. Um, you can get in there, make sure you're square on the bolt. Again, it's only 18 and a half pounds. So um, loosen that up. You should be able to unthread it by hand. We're gonna give this a few more minutes to drip. And at that point, I'll just move this over. Take the screw out and try to catch as much coolant as possible. I just went back up on the ladder and gave four quick bursts of air through there and probably got another liter of coolant. Before reinstalling your radiator drain plug, get a good look at the O-ring on there. Uh, you want the sides to still have a rounded appearance and for that O-ring to still uh, be very plump and round. If it looks flat, if it doesn't protrude, from the uh, plug itself, it's time to replace that. Not an expensive part. This one has been replaced uh, probably at the last service, so there's no need to do it again this time. The seal looks great. So we're just gonna put that back in and then rotate it 90 degrees back into position. The plug is keyed, so find the way that it fits, push it up until it bottoms out, and I just use my fingers to give it a nice 90 degree uh, twist until it clicks into place. So now we can come back over to bank number one. I've already loosened up the drain plug, so we'll see if we can get a ratchet on that. Uh, loosen it up the rest of the way or just undo it by hand and collect the coolant that comes out. There is no perfectly clean way to do this with the engine in the car. The plastic is helping, though I can still see we've got some on the subframe there. Uh, the best thing to do is get a spray bottle, fill it with just normal water, then go in there and just kind of spray everything down. Uh, so when the coolant dries, it leaves that white residue behind. And if you go over it with some water, you won't get that. But you can see just how much more coolant. We've probably got another several liters in the engine block there. Um, so you definitely want to do it right and get all of it. Here's the coolant drain bolt and washer that I removed from bank one and the crush washer, aluminum crush washer, that's a one-time use washer. So you need this for this job. You'll need two of them, one for each bank. Uh, sometimes those stay on the bolts. Other times they are stuck to the side of the block itself and you'll need to go in there with a screwdriver or some pry tool and remove it from the block. So as I continue to let that drip, I'm gonna dig out two of those washers. Here are the washers we need, 0711996325. We'll need two of those. For good cleaning measure, we're just gonna take our old bolt, drop it in the ultrasonic cleaner. This is completely unnecessary, but we'll give you a nice clean bolt to work with. To torque the bank one drain plug, I found that a 3 8 torque wrench does fit in there. It's a little bit tight, a little bit awkward. 18 and a half pounds, 25 Newton meters. We go from the wrench, three inch, three eighths extension, then a one inch wobble extension, followed by a three eighths, six point, 13 millimeter socket. So with our fresh washer in there, that's torqued us back. For the bank two driver's side block drain plug, uh, we're best off with the flex ratchet, followed by a six inch, three eighths extension, a three inch extension, and a deep well 13 millimeter six point socket. Torquing the bank two coolant drain plug is uh, just like initially loosing and removing it. Six inch, three inch, and a deep well socket. Um, I did add two foot pounds since we've got a couple extensions in play here, uh, but it went in there pretty well. I found that the best way to access that bolt is actually right here in between the steering box, the uh, pitman arm, the steering box, and then that heat shield, and you can get a straight shot on that head. So we didn't need to use any sort of swivels for this entire job, which is surprising. With both block drain plugs tightened underneath, we're ready to refill the system with coolant. 50-50 BMW antifreeze and distilled water. Do not use tap water. I mix that outside the car, poured everything in until we're just a little bit above full. Once I turn the car on in a minute, it's going to ingest a lot of coolant. It is a self-bleeding car, thankfully. Uh, the M5, the 540 is not. Uh, you'll need to find additional instructions there, but essentially there's a bleeder screw right here that I recommend replacing with the Euro brand brass one, but if you've got the plastic one, use a Phillips and be careful. Essentially, you just open that up while it's running uh, until you start getting straight coolant out of it and not a bubbly froth and not air. That'll bleed the system out. But here on the M5, start it up, let it run uh, 10 or 15 minutes, put some heat in it. I have not put the belly pants back on yet. I like to let it run, get warm, pressurize the system a little bit. Obviously the cap will need to be back on for that and then we'll check those block plugs for any leaks. Assuming they're dry, we'll put the pans back on and then we're done. With the car idling, we're gonna make a few adjustments to the heater here, bring that all the way up 
on both temperatures. I'll get to the other side when I have a free hand. I'm gonna turn recirculation on and move the heat dial all the way to warm fan speed low. That's going to cycle coolants through the heater core and uh, let us bleed the system out a little better. You can also turn on all three zones there. I got the level adjusted as accurately as I could and then took the car for a short drive. And it seems to help to go uphill a little bit and downhill a little bit, slosh the coolant around in the engine, um, let it bleed out as much as it can organically, drive the car maybe 10, 20 miles, then come back, uh, let it cool down and adjust the level one more time. And with that, we've completed a coolant flush on the E39 M5. That should be done every three years. Don't be like most of my customers and go decades in between flushes. It's cheap, easy maintenance to keep everything working properly. And if you're curious, out of a five gallon bucket, that is how much coolant we collected. Call that between two, two and a half gallons.